Since the beginning of my videography, cinematography, filmmaking career, whatever you want to call it, I have always been told by Canon users, Panasonic users, etc., of all the various issues Sony has. One of the biggest things is color science and with the new movie, The Creator being released, shot solely on the Sony FX3, I feel a bit vindicated because all of this time, I always thought, what are they talking about? You know, is something wrong with my eyes? Is something wrong with what I'm seeing with Sony colors? Because what I am seeing with my Sony cameras all along, even with the previous models, such as A6300, A7 III, a6000 yeah sure there were some issues with colors but the majority of time it was because i was using auto white balance when i first started and some simple tweaks in the tint slider and hsl if needed would fix any of my color problems with my sony cameras so seeing that a bigger budget hollywood movie 80 million dollar budget hollywood movie the creator and the director forgot the dude's name. Gareth Edwards decided to use Sony FX3 because he liked the size, he liked the ability to use ISO 12800, and shocker, he loved the color signs. Specifically, the skin tones. I mean, the fact that the Sony FX3 is being used in a Hollywood big budget movie is absolutely game-changing because clearly you don't need to use a $100,000 camera to get Hollywood level image quality and also being featured on IMAX somehow, Sony FX3, the first ever camera, the first ever mirrorless camera to be used on IMAX. And uh, if you look at all the reviews, a lot of the reviewers who probably have no idea what this film was shot on are talking about how it is amazingly shot, it's visually stunning, the whole nine yards even saying it's you know better than even the bigger budget marvel movies and some of it they are talking about how great the cgi is how realistic it looks but clearly the sony fx3 is a highly capable camera in the right hands and of course any of those hundred thousand dollars cameras would have worked great also in the right hands it's just sometimes you go on like netflix and you see some of these movies and documentaries that are shot with these more expensive cameras and they look like trash not because of the camera, it's because of lighting, it's because the director, DP or whatever, just doesn't have the right eye, just doesn't have the same level of artistic talent as the dudes and dudettes that are working on the creator or whatever. Clearly the Sony FX3 is an amazing camera at $3,500, well worth every penny uh, that it costs. And it goes to show the great importance of other aspects of filmmaking other than just the camera body. Lenses, obviously, they use very expensive lenses on this movie, and lighting. And just in this situation, for the most part, I got some windows of here. Lighting is pretty decent. However, hopefully, me making some minor adjustments to how I was shooting this shot made it slightly better. I added a cheap, $80 light from Ulanzi with a built-in battery with a reflector on it and I'm just bouncing it off of my white kitchen wall and I changed the lens from an f2.8 Tamron 20-40 to a Sony 35 f1.8 and I get this look versus the look I had before. Slightly different but hopefully what this enabled me to do is to retain some additional highlights here to make the footage a little bit more even. So with that said, um, I'm sure the director had many other reasons. Perhaps the $80 million budget wouldn't allow him to get a $100,000 Aerie, Alexa, or whatever on set. So the FX3, he was probably able to get like a bunch of FX3s on set, no problem. I'm all about budget. I mean, I'm filming this YouTube video on a massive budget. Instead of hiring a babysitter, you know, I am watching my son while filming a YouTube video like the responsible father that I am. Even though I could probably go to the local Home Depot and pick up Maria, although she's undocumented, I'm sure she knows how to handle children, no problem. Give her a solid 20 bucks cash and I got a babysitter for the day. The only problem is 
this YouTube video is probably gonna get me $2. So yeah, I might be able to buy one diaper. Please comment below if you have potty training tips. Greatly appreciated. Those of you with an FX3, FX30 might be wondering, hey, well, I got this cinema rig called the FX3 over here used in Hollywood movies, and I would like to rig it out a little bit, but I'd still want to maintain the small and lightweight form factor of the Sony FX3. Well, I have a solution for you because pretty much Condor Blue sent me all of the nitty gritty cage items for me to build this rig out. And the key to this rig is obviously it is not that huge and massive. It really is just a cage for the FX3, FX30 with the top handle that connects to a quick release plate from um, Condor Blue and a, and a V-mount plate by Condor Blue. And I'm able to attach a V-mount battery here to power the camera and the monitor. And I could rest it on my chest like this to film some really steady handheld shots moving back and forth. I could obviously use the top handle like this to get some lower angle shots. And of course, the Sony monitor is absolute dumpster trash. So it really helps for me to have my Atomos Ninja V Plus here. You know, some of you will say, well, you could just power the Sony camera with the Sony battery internally. And I could definitely put a Sony battery on the Atomos without needing this V mount, but there's two reasons for this. When I put a battery, a decent one on the monitor, it really throws off the balance of the monitor and it adds a weight here moving forward. And the Sony battery, yeah, I do have one in here, but I have it connected to this. So I know the Sony camera will last almost indefinitely on a run and gun shoot without having to swap batteries and of course the battery weight in the back helps with the overall balance of the rig as well as it provides me with a chest rest right here when I'm filming. This battery is a Kame TV battery. It has about 6,875 milliamps. I like it because it's light and it's small and it obviously keeps us nice and balanced. There is a Moment battery that I also use. This one has a bit more capacity but it is slightly bigger, slightly heavier, and there's only one D-tap. So in order to power the camera, I used this uh, USB-C to USB-C cable because there is a USB-C out on this. So if you're looking to rig out FX3 or your FX30 with a cage rig without going overboard and still maintaining a nice small form factor that the FX3, FX30 provides for your run and gun shoots, for your filmmaking needs, I highly recommend anything Condor Blue offers. And I actually really recommend the way I rig this out here. Links are in the description below. Other things I have here is a new variable ND uh, circular polarizer filter from Freewell. That will be announced probably sometime next month. So please subscribe if you're interested in learning more about this little nifty ND filter. And um, that is that. With that said, guys, if you, with that said, guys, are you going to watch the creator movie, and are you interested in this cage? What is your setup? What is your opinion and all this stuff? Please give me a comment below, and till next time, lighten up. Hey, man, you make Sony can't do video. Nah, bro, I wasn't invited to Sony Can Do. Not gonna lie, I would've went. No, man, I said Sony Can't Do, not Can Do. Sony Can't Do? What's that? Let me show you. Sony Can't Do Shutter Angle. Sony Can't Do Open Gray. Sony Can't Do Screen Not Look Like Trat. Sony Can't Do Firmware Update for Sony A7 S3. Sony can't do new camera release without 10 million YouTuber track video. Let me guess, Sony can't do Canon Color Science or Panasonic Ibis? Buy my How to Circle Jerk other content creator, Mata Clat. Only $29.99.